Good morning, everyone. I'm good, thank morning. you. Very good. I see you navigating, um, sitting in a parked car, trying to get your, your Zoom fix so you can <laughs> see us. So, look, thank you. And the sun's on your face. <laughs> Hope you're having a good morning. I, I imagine now, just coming off the back of this, what was this like, the, the, the time at the club and the job that you had to do? Yeah, it was strange. We, we, I was playing golf. I was driving to play golf and I got a phone call from the gaffer to see what are you doing? I said, playing golf. He said, um, <laughs> can you get up to Leeds tonight? I went, what? I didn't have a clue what he was speaking about. And he said, I'm going in for the last four games of the season. I think I actually said, are you mad? <laughs> and he said, um, we'll get yourself up here tonight and we'll, uh, we'll have a conversation. So I went and played nine holes. I was rubbish. Got in my car and drove to Yorkshire. That was it. Uh, and th- he, I think he said to me, he said, I think Robbie Keane's coming in. Do you think he should come with us? I think it'd be a great idea. And all of a sudden, Robbie Keane was with us at about half ten the next morning as well. And that's how quick it all happened. Cal, tell me, mate, I, I saw Leeds, I think probably just before you went there, I think it was a Leicester game at home. They probably could have won it, but they could have lost it as well. And I thought to myself, the lack of goals would be a big, big problem for them, mate. I really did. And sadly, that was the way it worked out. First question is, how difficult a job was it? And the second question would be, have they got what it takes to get back up straight away? You did watch the Leicester game, because I, I did that for Sky, and I think you were doing a commentary on it. Yeah. And I watched that exact same game. I think that night I said that Leeds are going to be probably one of the teams that are going to struggle to stay up. Um, we did a fans uh, Q&A when we got to Leeds. I was open and honest about that when I seen them from afar. Once you get in the club, there's some unbelievable people. There really is. The, the backroom staff, the, the CEO, the whole football club's geared to be successful and in the Premier League. Obviously, the last two years have been incredibly difficult time for everybody, whether that be from the recruitment point of view, some of the injuries. If you look, even when Sam went in, to lose Patrick Bamford, there's one or two yeah. big players, Tyler Adams didn't have since the year he wasn't fit. And they're big players if you're going to win games of football. And and you know, they just they just struggled in certain moments, especially when we were there. That obviously the penalty missed, the chances that we can we can see that penalties that we give away, sendings off, just key moments of big even the West Ham game with second half, we got dominated in most of the areas. The two goals were obviously went to VAR and were only a few centimetres from being onside or offside, should I say. Yeah. So they were so close, yet so far throughout the course of the whole season. It was almost an impossible job. Um, but, I'm, you know, it's like Ali, we all have that ego where we all think that we can go in yep. and pull off a miracle. And that's that's not that's not a naivety or a stupidity. We actually did believe we could do it, even though we knew it would be so difficult. Carl, I, I, I've seen a bit of how Sam works inside the ropes. Yep. And he's got, like, I don't know if he still does it, but he has this, like, 10 disciplines for success where on the list yep. are... Different things like defend set plays well, score from set plays, win second balls, play into the space, run into the space. Basically, don't beat yourself, get organised. And if they're going to beat us, they're going to have to score a good goal against us. Did did they take that on board or did he? has he changed <laughs> from that now? No, he hasn't changed, mate. Um, but what we, we, we split up a little bit different. We had the, obviously, we had the three A's, defensive, middle and final. And he just went through three, the three core basics that you're going to have to do to achieve or to try and stay in the Premier League. Um, right. But you know the Premier League team more than anybody. It's so unpredictable and the quality of players that you're coming up against week in, week out. Yeah. You can be defensively sound, but a moment of magic can, sort to, can throw a game. Or equally on the other side, that like the pace is so quick, you, you go to the ground and, you, and you, you give a penalty away or you do something silly. And they take advantage of it. For instance, last game, the board of Harry Kane twice. And at no stage in that game, do you think he was going to miss? Yeah. Mm. The quality that he possesses, Declan Rice in the West Ham game, we go one nil up. And actually in that game, Patrick Bamford his hamstring about two minutes before. And as he was about to go down, somebody's pressed his man because he couldn't get to it. And then all of a sudden, it drops to, to, to Declan Rice and he scores back post. And you think to yourself, these moments just never felt for us at any stage. Mm. He went through the basics, set plays were important. At the time, I don't, I don't think Leeds were that far off. They weren't bad defenders, set plays or attacking set plays either. Mm. It's just the goals that they conceded was astronomical throughout the course of the Premier League season. You can't yeah. see that many in the Premier League. Yeah, Carl, what was what was the process and and um, just for you to confirm as well? Obviously, did, did you go? <laughs> <laughs> did you did you guys did you and Robbie both leave with Sam? Did they did they get you guys together and say do you want to stay? Do you want to go? What what happened? That was down to the gaffer to have conversations privately, as you'd imagine, with with the football club. We, I read some really strange things throughout the course of this week, saying that always oh, the sort of the was the least weeks in charge of a Premier League team. At no stage was it ever going to be any more than what we were doing. 
that that was the agreement when we went in, but just four weeks, and then the contract finishes on the last day of the season. What we did do, though, Laura, we we made sure pre season was partially planned. We made sure we did one or two things for the for the make sure that whoever comes in next, it's in a it's in a better state. Obviously, you've always got a responsibility to the football club and the respect to the fans and the people in the building that you've got to pre plan for the next stage of the football club's journey, whatever league that was in. What do you think they need, Carol? In terms of a manager, what kind of manager do you think Leeds need need now? Listen, mate, we we haven't got long enough to go through that just (laughs) on this phone call. Um, What do they need? They need that rawness of Leeds United is is incredible. It really is. The fans and the fans really got behind the players, even though the last day we, we were poor. Not until the end of the game did they, did they have did they voice their opinions. And that just shows you the level of quality of the people who, who support their football club. And that's something that you, you'll know every time you go to Ellen Road. It is special. We went away to obviously to, to Man City and the way to West Ham. They travel really well. They get behind their players. I think the, the big thing for me is the championship. It, it, it is relentless. It really is. I don't think people truly understand how difficult that level is. Uh, so it's going to have to, they're going to have to bring in players that are robust to compete at that. They're going to have to bring in people who understand and, and want to work with what the club already has, which has some very, very good players. I don't know the contractual uh, agreements from some of the players, Ali, but you'd imagine some players that buy up clothes, they have to make decisions very quickly. I think when it comes to football and decisions at the end of the season, you'll ask for that respect, first and foremost, the players to make a decision sooner rather than later so the football club can plan for the future. Mm-hmm. I think that's something that they're going to have to re- they're going to have to get from the players sooner rather than later, and then a buy in, a buy in to compete in a championship, and those people's egos allow them to want to play at that level. Carl, what's next for you? I imagine the immediate future is a bit of golf uh, and a bit of sun. But I'm, I'm actually away at the in? moment, so the, the, the first bit I'm going to the gym right as we speak. Oh. I'm, I'm enjoying being in the sun. Um, I I love my time not working. I really love the four weeks working with the gaffer. He was brilliant. Dean asked before what he was like. He had the zest for it. He really did. He was outstanding. I think if you spoke to all of the players, they'll tell you we're working with Sam. He doesn't have to make it fun. Mm-hmm. Um, it's organised and it, it sort of gives you that buzz to get back in. I enjoyed not managing. I enjoyed watching him with the stress. I enjoyed watching him speaking to the media. Mm-hmm. I enjoyed knowing he didn't sleep the night before and I was fresh and ready to go. So I enjoyed that bit of it. But um, I am Mr. Managing and it is something that obviously when a job comes up, I want it to be the right one and I'm, I want to get back in sooner rather than later now. Talk Sport Breakfast with Laura Woods. Monday to Wednesday morning, 6 till 10. On AM, on DAB, via the Talk Sport app and on your smart speaker. Talk Sport.